guys, I'm Beth. And I'm Jamal, and today we're continuing our conversation about race. So if you haven't noticed, Beth is white and I'm black. Um, <laughs> kind of wearing our differences on our skin. <laughs> <laughs> In the last video, Beth interviewed me about my experiences as a black male and my thoughts on the George Floyd murder and the issues that have kind of come to the forefront. So today, I'm giving Beth the platform. I want to know about Beth's experiences as a white woman, her perspective on racial injustice as a white woman, and just to hear from her, really. These are conversations <laughs> that we've had many times throughout our relationship, but we thought we'd bring it onto YouTube to open up the conversation for you guys. Hell Go. <laughs> so Beth, yes. first of all, you're safe to say whatever you need to say. Thank you. I love you. You're amazing. You're my wife. We're not judged. You're not accepted. How are you feeling? Obviously, absolutely outraged at what has happened to George Floyd and many, 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 many others. And the fact that so many black people have had to deal with this for so, so long is just absolutely appalling and gross and terrible. I also, at the same time, feel very nervous to talk about this, especially on camera. It's conversations that Jamal and I have had for like ages. I feel very safe with Jamal because he's my husband and he never would judge me. If I said anything wrong. It's kind of scary to talk about because I, I don't want to cause any more hurt than has already been caused by saying something wrong. And I'm aware that a lot of white people are feeling this as well. But saying that, I'm also very aware of the power that my voice has, especially as a white person, to talk about this. So I'm not gonna let awkwardness or fear stop me from doing my part, which is speaking up about it. Yeah, that's really good. For those of you who don't know, Beth has had a very different childhood as a white person. Do you want to talk about your experiences growing up and how that's kind of affected your outlook on the situation? I, I grew up in Malawi in Africa until I was 14, so I was actually, funnily enough, the minority. A lot of my friends were black. I was pretty much one of the only white families living in the area we were living. In terms of like when I came back to England, it was weird being surrounded by so many white people. And I was just really shocked at the racism that like was going on in the Western world. I'm not saying that there's there's not racism in Malawi or in Africa, because obviously there is, but the kind of microaggressions, microaggressions the jokey racism that goes on, which isn't jokey. <laughs> which is just unfair. Obviously the blatant racism that is especially being shown in America is just shocking. So I think mm -hmm. coming here has made me a lot more aware of educating myself. Because my life has been so full of diversity and just seeing the power of unity yeah. that it just makes me so mad. So, so, so mad that this is still going on. Mm -hmm. And it makes me really just want to fight for freedom in every way I can. So as a wife of a black man, how has it affected your outlook on life, going forward, building a family, you know, our relationship? How is it being a wife to a black male? It's so weird. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's so weird. weird. We, don't, we don't talk like this in general. We don't call each other black male. And it's just for the purpose of this video, um, with what's going on in society, we want to really hit home on the things that, that we don't really consider, but... Well, that, that's just it. It's like, I recognise that you're black mm. and I love you. And I love how you look. I love what you do. I love everything about you. <laughs> so it's just, I don't know, it's just strange. Because it hasn't affected my love for no, Jamal. at all, at, obviously. At all, like it mm. hasn't affected the way that I feel about him or how great I think he Feels is. Feels silly to even have to justify exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> I guess it's made me more aware of educating myself in terms of I want to be able to speak up. I want to be able to defend my husband. I want to be able to understand the struggles that our children may face and not be a bystander in any way. So I just want to be able to understand as much as I possibly can and be able to support because I think that's a big thing, especially right now. As you were saying in our previous video, how much it's affected you emotionally and how draining it's been. I just want to be able to support Jamal emotionally, physically, anyway. Like, I want to be able to shower love. Thanks, Beth. White privilege. Yeah. When you hear those words, 
What does it invoke? What do you understand from that? What does it mean to you? Talk to me a bit about the concept from your perspective. Of white privilege. So I'm gonna start with what I know about white privilege. White privilege to me means that in Western society, I won't struggle because of my skin color. I would, I would say that makes sense. What helped me kind of understand it more was how like there's male privilege in terms of it's not a good idea for me to walk alone at night in a dodgy alley or anywhere really mm. whereas for a man it would be different and that's because of your experiences as well isn't it? yeah well, because i've experienced like a heck ton of harassment and like mm. <clears throat> being like sexually harassed yeah just had horrible stuff happen so yeah, that helped me understand the concept of white privilege because there's different privileges, there's male privilege, there's yeah. rich privilege, there's yeah. white privilege. So were you aware of that before you came to England? I wasn't aware of the term, no, I wasn't aware of the term white privilege. To be honest, the first time I heard the term white privilege, I was like, I don't really understand that. Yeah. Like, because my initial kind of reaction honed in on the word privilege because there's so many people from so many different races that struggle and have had a hard life mm. or have had to fight to get somewhere. But I didn't understand at that time that that was referring to, you know, the systemic racism, how in Western society the things are geared towards white people succeeding. So would you say you kind of have more of an understanding of what it means? Oh now? yeah, definitely. I understand what it means now. It's just I think the term can be provoking to mm. white people because if someone's lived like a white person's lived a hard life they're like oh, I haven't been privileged I haven't lived a privileged life but obviously it's not saying that it's saying they won't struggle because they're white what are you going to be doing going forward about you know the situation and what can we personally do as a couple going forward me personally, like I've been saying before, educating myself, understanding the history of stuff more, listening, talking about it with friends and family, talking about it to the point where it's not a taboo subject. Yeah. Um, where it's like a normal subject to talk about, creating safe spaces for people to talk about this, mm. like you've done for me. Speaking up in instances of like witnessing racism, if I hear something or, you know, just not allowing anything to slip through the net. Providing platforms and opportunities in any way that I can. Thank you, Bethany Billy, for okay. answering my questions <laughs> and for speaking. I hope you felt safe and you said some amazing, really important things. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, make sure you go check out the other video that we did where Beth interviewed me as well so you get kind of both perspectives. Comment down below with your input on this subject. Let's have a conversation. Obviously, this is not the be all and end all of the race issue. We want to open up a conversation yeah. and be a platform. So let's have more conversation in the comments. Subscribe to our channel for more of us. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs>